The following is a presentation of Nachi Creek Baptist Church in Madisonville, Tennessee. For more information, please visit nachicreekbaptist.org.
appears to me that what we ought to do is just call a recess and shout for a while. I believe revival is already showing up, and the Holy Ghost wants to do something for somebody here today. And if you hadn't got in on it, you don't have to wait on me to invite you. You follow his invitation and do what he would have you to do, and it'll be all right with the rest of us. Amen. 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 I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here. I've been traveling the road and been on the highway for Jesus more than 42 years. And I don't regret a mile. <laughs> that I've traveled for the king. Uh, in the nation in which we live today, I'm glad they still let me go anywhere. Besides the jail or the hospital. But I am honored and privileged to be here. And I thank you for uh, being in the house of God this morning. But more than that, I'm glad God's in the house. I appreciate your pastor, Brother Gail, and him inviting us to come and be here. And I wish I had uh, revival in my pocket that I could just hand it and pass it out. But I don't have that. I can't give it to you. But I want you to know it's available. Amen. It is available. We can have as much of God even yet today as we really want to have. Amen. As you really want to have. Amen. Now, I, I don't know that it's necessary to anybody to preach here today. He's already doing some preaching. He's talking to hearts. And when he's talking to hearts, all we got to do is listen. And obey. Amen. Obedience is far better than sacrifice. Amen. It wasn't as much of a sacrifice to get here. But to get here and then not be obedient to the Spirit of God is a travesty. Yes, it is. So don't wind up failing to be what God would have you to be by not obeying the Spirit of God. Amen. If He tells you to do something, you just do it. It'll be good whether anybody else likes it or not. Amen. Amen. I, I know of a lot of things that I've done in my life that I had to obey the Spirit of God. Some folks didn't like it. Some folks didn't agree with it. But you know what? I'm glad that Jesus got to me before they did. Amen. I'm really glad Jesus got to me before the seven-day Adventists did. Because they had found out I wasn't of their number. I'm glad Jesus got to me before the Mormons did. Because they've got too many ways to make it. And I wouldn't have been able to get in on it. I'm glad Jesus got to me even before the Baptists did. Because I'm finding out as I travel around over the country that there are several of them that don't want me either. They've got their four they don't want anymore. And so they're, they're already satisfied with what they have. But I'm really glad that Jesus came by where I was and saved my wretched soul and uh, made me a new creature in Christ Jesus the Lord and included me on the benefits of knowing him. Amen. And the psalmist David looked and said, uh, there are a lot of benefits, the healing of our diseases, the forgiving of all our sins and washing away of all of our iniquities and uh, all these different things. He said, these are benefits that uh, you can enjoy by just knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad I got in on it. Not because I was worthy of it, not because I was good enough, not because I did anything or that I ever could do anything. But he did it all that I might inherit everlasting life and that I might inherit all the benefits of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, as my Redeemer, as my King, as my Lord. As I go through this world, I've got somebody going with me. I don't have to go by myself. Matter of fact, it's been over 50 years now since I met him, and since I met him, I've not been anywhere alone. Amen. Amen. And I'm not telling you everywhere I've been that I should have been. Amen. I'm not telling you that everywhere I've been that I should have been, because there have been places I should not have gone. And I'm not telling you that every decision that I've made has always been right. Because I've made some of my own that I really regret. 
But I'm glad that he said if we will confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I found him to be a man of his word that he will do exactly what he said he will do. I got one verse of scripture on my heart right here, right now. Nobody has ever spoken like Jesus. When the Pharisees sent the soldiers to arrest Jesus and bring them to him, in John 7, verse 46, he said, they, they did not arrest him, they didn't touch him. His hour had not yet come. It was not time for him to go to the cross of Calvary. It was not time yet. He still had some things to do. There was some more that needed to be done before he finished the work on the cross of Calvary. And the soldiers in John 7, 46 looked and they couldn't do anything about it. Nobody touched the Lord Jesus. They went back to the Pharisees empty-handed. And they said, why have ye not brought him? They said, never man spake like this man. Never man spake like this man. It does not matter what the circumstance, it does not matter what the situation, it does not matter the heartache, the trial, the burden, it does not matter what may be going on in your heart and in your life. There's nobody ever been able to speak to you like the Lord Jesus Christ will speak to your heart and bring a calm and bring a peace and bring a serenity and bring a power and bring a presence into your life like the Lord Jesus Christ will bring. He spoke to the sick and they were healed. He spoke to the despised and they found love. He spoke to those that were tempted and tried and they found a way of escape. He spoke to those that were blind, they went away seeing. He spoke to those that could not hear, they went away hearing. He spoke to those that were lame, they went away walking and a leaping and a praising God. He spoke to all kinds of situations and circumstances and they all went away better for it. Amen. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Those are the words of Jesus. He is a teacher beyond any other teacher because he was the Word of God incarnate. He left heaven and wrapped himself in flesh and walked among men that we might behold his glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. And in doing so, we saw that he makes no mistakes. And he does all things well. And everything that he does is right. There is absolutely no wrong in him. There's no chance of him ever lying to us. It's impossible for him to lie. Ask and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. My question to you is today, and I'm done, what do you need? What do you need? He did not promise you he'd give you what you wanted. But he said if you'd ask, he would supply your every need. Amen. By his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And you don't get a better bank account than that. You don't get a better promise than that. You can't get anything offered to you better than what Jesus wants to offer you today. What do you need? What is there in your heart and your life that is not what it ought to be? Are you in the will of God? Are you serving him? Are you honoring him? Are you pleasing him with the way that your life is today? Are you saved by the grace of God? Have you been born again? Have you been washed from all your sin? Have you been made a new creature in Christ Jesus the Lord? Is gone all your sin? I'm glad my sin is cast as far as the east is from the west. I don't know whether you've ever dawned on you or not, but there's no way of telling how far the east is from the west. You start in one direction, you just keep going. You head out east and still go east and you'll, you'll circle the globe and you'll still be going east. But if you start west and go around, you'll still be going west. East never meets west again. 
Those that have been washed from our sins in his own precious blood, they've been cast as far as the east is from the west. They'll never be brought up against us anymore and we won't have to face them again because they're gone. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. What are you seeking? What are you asking for? What are you needing from God? He's got it. Amen. Amen. He has it. He is what you need. No matter what you may need. Right now, I want you to stand to your feet. That's exactly what the Lord laid on my heart sitting right there in the seat just a few minutes ago. I had something else. I've got a whole outline already lined up for you. I got several of them. But he told me to tell you, ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. That's the promise of the word of God. That's Jesus speaking directly to you today. No matter what you may need, it's available. I give you this promise, and I'm through, and you can do with it. He said, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. Amen. All that you could ever ask or think. That's pretty good. Amen. I know I've asked for some extravagant things at times that I didn't need. Amen. He is able to supply. He's able to surrender. He's able to satisfy. He's able to sanctify. He is able, whatever you need, come to Jesus today. Get us a song invitation, please. He's able to meet your need today. If you really want revival, he's able. If you really want God real in your heart, he's able. If you really want God to touch your life, make of you an instrument worthy to be used of him, He's able. He is able today. And he is what you need. Ask. And it shall be given you. See. You shall find. Knock. And it shall be opened. Father, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Christ over all that are here. Oh, I ask you, dear God, right now that the Holy Ghost in power might help each one of us here today to ask of God, to seek of the Lord, to knock upon heaven's door, that we might receive what we need for our lives today, that we might shine in this world of darkness as those who have been touched by the hand of the Master. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.